Hello there. Today we're going to be taking this almost 100 year old recipe for a strong ale and turning it into this. So let's get started. This recipe comes from a friend's neighbor who's in his late 90s. Said he's had it as long as he can remember. The recipe calls for sugar, blue ribbon malt syrup with hop flavor, dry yeast, and water. The procedure pretty simply lists dissolving the ingredients, adding a blow-off tube, and then bottle conditioning. So, I'll probably stick to my own procedure for this part. Unfortunately, blue ribbon malt syrup with hop flavor stopped being produced maybe 50 or 60 years ago, so instead I used Beersmith to create an extract recipe that best matches the gravity, bitterness, and color of the original recipe. After converting the extract version to all grain and taking an educated guess on what the hop flavoring was, we're ready to start collecting our water. For our three and a half gallon batch, that means about 4.8 gallons. While the water is coming to temperature, we'll go ahead and add our brewing salts. I don't think the people that made this recipe originally adjusted their water, but since I'm the one drinking it, that's what I'll do today. Only about half of the fermentables of this recipe come from malt, but since it's almost a 10% beer, that means four pounds of pale two-row, milled, and then added to our mash. Once the mash has been stirred up, find a nice comfortable spot and wait 60 minutes for conversion. At that 60 minute mark, bump your mash temperature up to 170 degrees, and once it's reached that temperature, go ahead and pull your grains out and let them drain. During the drain process, I'll pull some wort off the bottom and rinse it back through the top of the mash. I paid for all the sugar in the grain, so might as well use it if we can. Next, we'll set the kettle to boil, and while waiting for it to boil, we'll add some foam inhibitor. Best I could find out, the hop flavoring in the blue ribbon malt syrup was Cascade, so that's what we'll be using today. I have a suspicion the target audience of this beer weren't exactly looking for a flavorful beverage, so half the fermentables are sugar. Go ahead and add that during flame out. After the boil, start your chilling process to drop the wort down to our yeast pitch temperature, or as the recipe says, warm but not hot. Once we've reached our target temperature, we'll take a specific gravity measurement to make sure our original gravity is as high as we intended it to be. If everything checks out, transfer your wort into your jug and pitch your yeast. Today I'll be using Imperial's A07 flagship. After shaking up your fermentation jug, be sure to hook up a blow-off tube because a beer with this gravity will definitely blow off an airlock. After two to three weeks when your fermentation has finished, go ahead and transfer it into your keg. I'll be carbonating at 40 psi for 30 hours before backing it off to serving pressure. After a couple more days of conditioning, the strong ale is done. So pour yourself a glass, or half if you have to drive anytime soon. So final impressions of the strong ale. It might not be a beer that I brew on a regular basis, mainly because I don't find myself drinking 10% beers too often, but I think as far as an experiment or kind of like a time capsule, looking back to the sort of beers that home brewers were brewing around the Prohibition era, it's really interesting. Um, I like to have a, a beer with a good story on tap, whether that be um, how it was made or how the recipe was designed. I think this definitely fits the bill, and for a 10% beer, it really does hide the 10% pretty well. It doesn't taste super boozy. The uh, malt flavor really isn't there. We didn't use too much malt, so that's not too surprising. And I think the hop additions might as well have just been ceremonial. It's, it's very dry, and as you can see, it didn't really clear up. But I think definitely fun to have on tap, and uh, I'm probably going to need some help finishing the rest of the keg.